Man, James Gunn really doesn't like birds, does he? Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2021 DCEU superhero action comedy, The Suicide Squad. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. The Suicide Squad stars Margot Robbie, Idris Elba, and John Cena, and was directed by James Gunn. It tells the story of a group of convict supervillains, dubbed the Suicide Squad, who are sent on a mission to destroy a secret lab on a remote island. Well, the DCEU has finally reached double digits, and celebrated this occasion by releasing a sequel to Suicide Squad, arguably the most maligned film in the franchise. I don't dislike the first Suicide Squad as much as most people do, but I won't deny that it's not a particularly good movie. So the prospect of a sequel to that movie was a little conflicting, and certainly a bit of a risky move on the part of Warner Brothers. And while it is a sequel, The Suicide Squad definitely sets itself apart from its predecessor. It functions more as a standalone sequel, carrying over a few characters and the concept of The Suicide Squad, but pretty much nothing else. And I have to say, that decision was a good one. The Suicide Squad is so much better than 2016's Suicide Squad in just about every regard. This is a film that's very sure of itself. While the first film felt like a disjointed mashup of ideas proposed by a committee, this one knows exactly what its identity is and what it's trying to accomplish. And a big reason for this is James Gunn in the director's chair. He has a lot of experience with ensemble superhero action comedies, and also with dark comedies. So his style was perfectly suited for a film like this. It's still stylish and uniquely stands apart within the DCEU, but doesn't have that pandering, trying too hard to be cool feel of the first Suicide Squad. It just is cool. You've still got some fun on-screen titles, the prominent music, including the Fratellis, the Decemberists, Pixies, and more, but it all flows a lot better this time around and feels less like a music video. Another significantly impactful difference here is the rating. There are plenty of PG-13 movies that are great, but with the premise of The Suicide Squad, an R rating just allows for so much more freedom and flexibility. This is actually the second film in the DCEU to get an R rating, the first being Birds of Prey, but this movie really utilizes the rating. It's a hard R. Not only does it have an R-rated plot, but it also features a lot of R-rated language and jokes, plus some very heightened on-screen violence. We're talking heads exploding, people getting ripped apart, burned alive, crushed, maimed, and killed in just about any way you can think of. It'll definitely be too much for some people, and it's probably a bit gratuitous by normal comic book movie standards, but it really works here and mixes well with the darkly comedic style that the film takes on. The characters and character dynamics here offer another huge improvement over the original film. Like that first film, this is another ensemble movie with a huge cast. In fact, there are way more members of the Suicide Squad this time around, plus an assortment of additional allies and villains. But even with such a huge cast, the ensemble aspect of this film is handled so much better this time around. We do get some returning characters that carry over from the first film. Harley Quinn, Rick Flagg, Captain Boomerang, Amanda Waller, but most of the characters here are new, and a lot of them are really obscure. People like Ratcatcher 2, Polka Dot Man, TDK, Weasel. Not everybody has the same amount of screen time. After all, Gunn did warn us not to get too attached to anybody, but I thought the character balance here was pretty good for those that do survive, or survive for a longer period of time. And even though we were told not to get too attached, I found myself caring about these individual characters a lot more than the last time around, even the ones that were completely new to me. And I think the team dynamic was really good this time, too. We have a group of supervillains forced to work together in an anti-hero capacity, which should result in a lot of fun interactions. And it actually does this time. There's a lot of entertaining banter, there's some plot-significant infighting, there are real character arcs that actually feel earned, and there's just this general sense of true chemistry this time. 
Something that I think really contributed to the improvement of the characters here was the pacing of the film. This movie assumes that we already understand what the Suicide Squad is, so it doesn't take long at all to jump into the meat of the story. Some of the action scenes are a little chaotic and quickly paced, but the film also has moments where it slows down. Never to a point where it feels like it's dragging, but enough to give the story and characters some time to breathe. We get some slightly more elongated introductions and backstories to a few of the characters that actually provide important and relevant information to make you care. This film also utilizes a slightly non-linear timeline, with frequent backtracking crosscuts among different groups of characters as they proceed with the mission, but it's done in a way that's never confusing and mostly works to manage the pace of the film. The Suicide Squad is a bizarre mix that only James Gunn could have delivered. It's action-packed and brutally violent, but also extremely entertaining and darkly comedic. It's cinematically engaging and features more than a few genuinely heartfelt character moments, but also manages to tie in some of the most ridiculously comic booky elements, like pretty much the entire third act, in a way that somehow doesn't feel completely ridiculous. It's absurd at times, but it works, because these characters have an actual mission this time around. This is an enjoyable, stylish, and unique film that certainly lives up to its added article. This really is THE Suicide Squad. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one has got to be the characters. So this is referring to both the actual individual characters that have a role in this movie, but also to the chemistry and dynamics among them as a group. We've got quite the assortment here. Returning characters like Harley, Rick Flagg, and Captain Boomerang, but also a ton of new characters. Bloodsport's certainly a standout, as is Peacemaker, but we've also got more obscure characters like Ratcatcher 2, Polka Dot Man, and King Shark that add to the fun. Not to mention about a dozen other characters that are in this film. Blackguard, TDK, Weasel, Javelin, Savant, and many more. In addition to having a better assortment of fleshed out characters, this movie also does a better job with the team dynamics, thanks in large part to James Gunn's ability to write and direct ensemble casts. The second pro is the pacing. This kinda goes hand in hand with the first pro, cause a better paced movie allows for better and more significant character moments. We get a 30 second rundown reminding us what the Suicide Squad is, and then we're off as the team begins their mission. There's no 30 minute music video montage introduction of all the characters this time. Everybody gets a very brief introduction, and then throughout the film, those who survive get a little bit more backstory. The film knows when it needs to be fast paced and action intensive, but it also knows when it needs to slow things down down a bit to give us and the characters some time to breathe and assess the situation. It's more than two hours long, but you never really feel the length, even with the non-linear timeline. On the con side, my only issues are things I would consider minor nitpicks. I'm not sure that I really like what was done with Harley Quinn here. I thought the character was fine and Margot Robbie's performance was good, but her storyline felt a bit off. She was much more a part of the ensemble in the sense that it wasn't the Harley show this time around, but there was a good chunk of the movie where she wasn't a part of the group, and it felt unnecessarily separate. I think her story here was definitely a big improvement over the 2016 film, but it felt like a bit of a step down from what was done with her in Birds of Prey. The other little nitpick I had was how exceptionally cavalier this film was with some of the character deaths. We knew going in that no one was safe, and it's not like I have a strong connection with any of these characters, but there were an awful lot of characters relegated to the role of almost entirely useless cannon fodder here. It made for some darkly entertaining scenes, but I wish some of their deaths had a little more importance in the story. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying The Suicide Squad or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy as you want my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give The Suicide Squad 4 out of 5 paws. This was a lot of fun, and a huge improvement over the first film. It's absurdly comic booky at times, but brutally violent at others, mixing everything together with its darkly comedic overtones and an abundance of characters. 
I would recommend The Suicide Squad to anybody interested in a fun, hard R-rated comic book movie. If ultra-violence and frequently crass dark humor aren't your thing, you probably won't like this very much. But if you're a fan of James Gunn's past films and are interested in seeing him apply his signature style to a supervillain ensemble film, you're probably gonna love this. And if you're somebody who really disliked the first Suicide Squad and are maybe a little hesitant about this one, don't be. This is a big improvement over that movie, though that first film really isn't necessary to understanding this one, so you could skip it if you wanted to. If you liked The Suicide Squad, I would recommend Guardians of the Galaxy. This was James Gunn's first foray into a cinematic universe, focusing on a semi-obscure ensemble of superheroes in the MCU. It's not nearly as violent or vulgar, but it's still an incredibly entertaining and funny superhero movie. If you like the idea of The Suicide Squad and want a non-superhero movie that uses the same basic premise, you should check out The Dirty Dozen. Rather than supervillains, it focuses on a group of standard prisoners who are recruited to partake in a near-impossible military mission in exchange for commuted sentences. And if you're really hard up for more Suicide Squad, you may want to watch the 2016 Suicide Squad. It serves as the introduction for this team and some of the characters, and has a very unique style, but I wouldn't say it's a particularly good movie. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen The Suicide Squad? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's an example of a sequel that you think greatly improves upon the first film? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe here at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.